This video was created to show you how to use the Class Cards app. And although there's a user's guide on the ClassCardsApp.com website, I thought a visual might help. So here we go. I've got the Class Cards app icon down here on my dock to make it easy to find. And I'm just going to tap that. Now that quick little splash screen you saw was actually the cover of the book I wrote years ago called Class Cards that talks about using a set of index cards to call upon students randomly. But now we've got it in an app. It's very easy to use. Now the app comes with a sample class preloaded. And we'll take a look at that sample class by just selecting it and touching this edit button down here. And you can see these students are actually sorted by their first name. I can sort them by their last name. I like to see them by first name. And also at the bottom, it'll show you exactly how many students are in this class. So as you enter students yourself, you have a little verification that you got them all. So we're going to jump back to the main screen. To use this app with your students, you just select the class. And you can make as many classes as you want. And I'll show you that in just a bit. But we just select the class we want to use. And you're going to touch this Deal button. See, I call this the Deal screen. And you can see that this is sample class. Or it might say Period 1, or it might say Math, or it might say Social Studies. But that shows what class we're working with. This is the student to call upon, Alia. And also, these are the next four students coming up. You always want to be prepared for who's coming up next. Now, I've got a couple of scoring options here. Depending upon the questions I'm asking, if it's a true, false, yes, no, kind of an objective question where there's only one correct answer, I'm going to use the plus minus, whether you're right or wrong. If it's more of a subjective type question, like author's purpose, students are giving the reasons for how they feel about something, uh, open-ended questions, I want to be able to use A, B, C, D. So I call upon Alia, and based upon her response, I'm going to give her a score. Let's give her a plus. Notice up here at this part of the screen, it shows the last student you called upon and the score you gave, and that C-O-R means correct. And if I need to fix that, if I gave her the wrong score, I can undo that. But we'll leave that with a plus. And I'm just basically going to call upon students, giving them scores. It's really that simple. If we're Again, if we're doing an open-ended question, uh, what was the author's purpose for having the character do this? I'm going to use the A, B, C, or D versions. And as you continue to call upon students and give them scores, notice how this, we call this the cue. This is the wait cue. This is the hold cue. I'll show you that in a second. And this is the student to call upon. Well, as we go through the students to call upon, they actually are removed from the cue. So if we keep calling upon students here, Stefan and Kier, we're now out of students. And what you're going to do is press the back button, touch the sample class, hit deal. And now these students have been randomized, kind of shuffled, and, and relisted. So once again, all 20 students are back in that list. A couple of other buttons I'd like to show you. Call upon Jack. Jack would like more time. For whatever reason, he asks for more time. I'm always OK with that. If you touch Jack's name, it goes into a holding area. That takes the pressure off Jack, allows him time to think develop a response, but notice how I'm able to call upon other students. As soon as Jack is ready to get back in the game, he'll raise his hand. My guys know that. If you ask for more time and now you're ready with the response, put your hand up in the air so I know. And if I touch your name, Jack now comes back up the score box and I can give him a score. Also, if I want to, I can call upon students without scoring their responses. All I do is press the pass button down here. And I'll just go right through their names. If you are scoring responses and a student just gives you absolutely nothing, this NR button down here means no response. And if I press that, it's, it's zero points and it counts as a response opportunity. Also, I can skip students. If I feel Kier might need more time, but he might be afraid to ask for more time, if I press the skip button, Kier is actually going to drop to the bottom of the wait queue. Everybody else moved up one space. That'll just buy him a bit of time. If I want to skip Kier a second time, and I press skip, it's going to actually kick him out of the queue and record the fact that he was skipped. Now, speaking of records, let's take a look at their scores. Touch the sample class. Touch the scores button. And here's a list of their scores. The first column is how many points they've earned for the scores they were given. And it's a four-point grading system. An A is four, and so is a plus. A B is 3, a C is 2, a D is 1, and a minus is 0. 
Now, the second column represents how many times they've been called upon to respond. And I like that column because it, it, it makes sure I'm being fair and not just skipping kids that are not easy to teach. And if I want to, I can sort these students by their score. If I touch the sort by score button down here, we can see them in the order of, and although it's kind of funny here, you see that Kevin has 33 points and Nui has 34. Well, this is actually based on their average. And I can sort to the bottom. But it is kind of fun to be able to recognize students for their hard work. So if it's lunchtime, I, I'd send Kevin and Nui and Marwa out first. And I might want to, after I dismiss everybody else, hold back a couple of kids. Let's hold back Ulrich, let's hold back Brienne, and just give them a little talk. And if I do want to talk to a student privately, but not show the scores of the other students, if I just touch the student's name, so I'm talking to Brienne, and I touch her name, it actually goes into this privacy screen, which I like a lot because it shows the entire breakdown of, of how she's doing. Here we see her grade average is 2.6, her rank in the class is 19 out of 20, and the class average is 3.0. This shows how many A's, B's, C's, D's, how many times she was correct, those are pluses, those are minuses, how many times I got no response, how many times she asked for more time to think, how many times she was skipped. And if I want to keep a record of the fact that we talked, I just touch the record button and a date pops up. So this will remind me maybe later in the week, that we spoke on February 20th. Let me show you how easy it is to add your own class. Without selecting a class, you just touch the Edit button. And we're going to select Create New Class. And you're going to call it which one. Now see, elementary school, you want a different class for each of the subjects you teach. Secondary level, it's going to be by period. So we're going to do a period thing here. I'm going to call this class period one, and I save it, and there it is. And the first thing I'm going to have to do, of course, is put students into it. And this is how I do it. I just hit the Add button. I'm going to type the student's name, save, and there's my first student. And I would just keep adding the names of students until the class was full. Secondary teachers with a lot of different periods, I'd actually assign a student to do this for you. Give them the roster and let them have at it. They love doing this kind of stuff. Now, if someone uh, drops out of a class, which happens on a regular basis, all you have to do is just select the class, touch the Edit button, and Brittany has moved away, and we're going to delete her. And if I hit the Delete button, it would delete her and confirm it for you. But we're just going to cancel out of that. Also, notice how we can mark a student absent. If Brittany is absent today, I will just hit the absent and notice how she is marked absent. She will not appear in the class queue as you call upon students. In fact, let's go back to sample class, hit the deal button, and if we were to go through these names, you would not see Brittany appear. If you didn't take attendance before you selected the class and hit the deal button, and an absent student appears, that's easy to take care of. If you just press and hold the student's name, an absent box pops up. And I will mark Stefan absent. He will not appear in the queue for the rest of the day. In fact, if we go back and take a look, hit the edit button, Brittany's absent, and way down here, Stefan is absent. And once they return to class, it's an easy matter of getting them both back into the queue. Just hit the present button. New student enroll, the add button. Type the student's name, hit save, he's now part of the class.